G'day. In this video, it's all about the caravan. You've been out on a dusty road, you've given it a rinse off, is that enough? Looks okay. What about checking the undercarriage, cleaning the undercarriage, inside, give that a good clean, and is there a way to prevent dust? I think there is. So, let's go. I wanted to tell you about this. Check it out. It's the chain, the safety chain that goes from the van onto the car. And uh, as you can see, it's getting a bit manky, a bit old. Got some, uh, looks like it's rough, but I'm pretty sure it's just the red sand and dirt from the going up the cape. Overnight, I soaked it in a, an ice cream container full of uh, just normal vinegar. You can get cleaning vinegar from Bunnings or from a department store but I reckon the um, just white vinegar is fine I think it's about a dollar a bottle poured it in neat left it overnight and now you can see it looks as though it's almost brand new I touched it up a little bit with the paintbrush and rinsed it off and there you go pretty good I feel compelled to tell you about this great little product not a sponsor by the way CT18, it's a kind of a washer degreaser all at the same time and it's quite powerful. Uh, I use it on the caravan, have been for a while now and it just brings the car, the caravan up to mint. I'd now start thinking about uh, using it on the car. The trick I, I use is yeah, make sure it's well diluted, put it on whatever component you're going to do, give it a bit of a wipe, a bit of a uh, rub down, a bit of a scrub and then rinse it off. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm saying do all that in about 10 minutes. I wouldn't be leaving it on. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's fine. Anybody's used this before and left it on for ages or whatever, please leave a comment down below. Um, but yeah, love this product. And it gets, gets the uh, car or the van really nice and shiny. I, again, probably wouldn't use it on the paintwork of the car. Happy enough to use it on the aluminium and the... Uh, and the plate, checker plate on the van. But, and happy enough to use it on places like the, it's always hard to get your dirty tires black again. Um, it's the one. Hopefully, as you can see, I'm under the van. Now I've got two solutions here. I've got straight vinegar in that bucket and in this bucket, I've got uh, CT18. I'm going to paint one section with the vinegar, one section with the CT18, wait five or ten minutes, wipe it off and uh, see the best result. Okay, that's painted with the vinegar. Now I'll leave it five to ten minutes. I will paint this section here of the axle with the Magic CT18. Okay, hold your horsepower. Don't worry about the vinegar. Vinegar is for soaking. The CT18, that's for the good stuff. That's come up uh, beautifully. Now I've got a uh, high pressure gun. Put the water in, pump it up and it should just spray. <laughs> <laughs> the wind's coming in here and it's spraying all over. my little pump system, take the lid off, put a little bit of the magic stuff in, not too, not too much, bloop, 
blop, blop. There's about three blops. And then I will top that up with the special water I just got, making up a mixture of about five to one. I don't really need much for one, one or two tyres. Pop this on. Pump it. Wait about 10 minutes, let it soak in. I'm going to use a uh, little scrubbing brush and then splash the water over and fingers crossed it comes up pretty well. Oh, I'm supposed to have protective glasses on as well. Let's close my eyes. Now it has to be said, I may be one of the only people in Australia who wants nice black tyres and if I am, then obviously don't watch this. Fingers crossed this all comes up okay. The big thing is, it's wet. Every tyre looks great when it's wet. The big crunches and I'll, I will show you. I'll just take a static shot tomorrow morning with it when it's all dried up and uh, fingers crossed it's still looking pretty good. To prevent dust, uh, there is various ways. Uh, one is the scupper, which I'll show you in a minute. But otherwise, what a lot of people do is they'll find a little vent, any of the little vents, and they'll cover it up with masking tape or some sort of tape. These are the fridge vents. And again, they cover it up with lots of gaffer tape or masking tape. And um, I think that would work to a certain extent. I've been extremely lucky because on my caravan, they had, um, it was already installed, it's called a scupper. And uh, the way that works is Inside, you open the latch and the wind, as you're driving down the road, blows in there and creates a positive vacuum inside the van and uh, no dust will get in. And when I went up to the Cape, amazingly, I drove the first 45 minutes just to double check, triple check, everything was all right, stopped, pulled out the side of the road, no dust. Then I drove all the way to the top of the Cape, all the way back, no dust in the van. So uh, I'm a great believer in the scupper. You can buy another unit. Um, it's quite expensive. I think it's over $1,000. It's got like a little engine in it and it literally sucks or blows the air out. But um, Caravan does it again. Thank you. Another random tip. I got these online. They're, um, what you do is you slip them onto the nuts, two nuts, and line them up. I've got mine lined up in such a way that they look like that. If in the corrugations it bounces and starts to loosen the wheel nut, it'll no longer be lined up. And that's an immediate uh, notification for me. Get down and check them, check them all. So they just sit there like that all the time. So long as there's no loosening of the nuts, they'll stay the same. And as you can see, I've got them on both wheels. Lined up like this. This one's lined up like that. Bottom one's lined up like that. And as I say, when they become out of alignment, that's perfect like that. If suddenly I come in out one day and I check them and they look like that, that means one of these nuts has come loose and I don't pull it off and straighten it. I <laughs> take all of them off, check all the wheel nuts and then line them up and put them back on again. They just slip on and I'm pretty sure they won't fall off too easily, hopefully. There we go. Just check when you're putting them on the first time that they're put on firmly. You don't want to come out and find that they've, you've, the indicators have actually vibrated off. Washing awning is usually a two-part process. Wash the inside, and when you've finished all that, rinse it off, and then wash the outside. Being out in the middle of the bush, it wasn't really possible to uh, put the hose on it, so it's a matter of a series of buckets. Fill up the bucket, throw it up at the area you've just washed, 
and it lands on top of you. But hey, it's a sport in itself. If you wanted to use soap, again I would use the car shampoo that I normally use, I mentioned in other videos, and I find that really good. The CT18, I don't think I'd put on it, I'm just worried that it might affect short term or long term the colour of the paint or the integrity of the warning. Okay, so well, let's wrap it up. Cleaning your caravan, quite important, because most of us have got a caravan that's going to cost between $40,000 and $100,000 plus, and uh, one stage we'll probably want to sell it. So we can't sell it if it's in poor condition. Yeah, really important to wash it, keep it washed, keep it fairly clean, and the outside, that's the easy bit. The inside, don't forget to give that a rinse, I'm sure, not a rinse, a good clean, I'm sure you will do that. Undercarriage, that's the bit that's tricky. So hopefully in this video you've seen a couple of hints of just how to do that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And until then, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.